Welcome back to the Women of Courage online Bible study. We are in week four of the Better Together reading plan. And today I'm bringing you a conversation with Helen Lee. Guys, I was so encouraged and inspired by talking with Helen about what it looks like to welcome strangers, to love foreigners, and not only what that does in our own lives and in theirs possibly, but really what we learn about the heart of God through it. I know you guys are gonna love this conversation. Helen, in your devotion, you share about how your dad escaped from Korea in the early 1950s as a young teenager and how American soldiers extended him help and kindness. Yeah. How does that story shape the way you see people in need, especially I'm thinking about immigrants? Hmm. So my dad, as a result of that experience has never ever shaken his appreciation for America and for the kind of hospitality and aid that was given to him when he had essentially nothing except for the clothes on his back. And so we have heard that story for the ages, like through every year, I feel like multiple times a year. We always commemorate my dad's um, departure from North Korea, December 4th, 1951, we know that date kind of intimately. Wow. And um, we also try to mirror that whole idea of welcoming the stranger in a lot of our family traditions. So mm-hmm. when I was growing up, we would always have strangers, so to speak, at the table, yeah. at the Thanksgiving dinner table in particular. My dad, when he was a student, was a, a student from a foreign country here in America mm-hmm. and was so grateful when people would invite him to the table for, for Thanksgiving. And that became such a tradition that we try to continue that and open our home to those who might be needing a place to be on this uh, very festive holiday, especially if they don't have family in the United yeah. States. Such a practical way to think about providing welcome for a stranger, and especially at those times where it's so such a part of our custom just to gravitate towards family, but what about people in our lives and our communities who don't have that, you know, biological family built in? What does it look like to invite them in? And there are so many places that you can find those students. If you are connected near or in any kind of proximity to a college or university, there are hundreds of international students who would love that kind of invitation, especially during the holidays or right. international schools or just, again, in your community. So there's lots of places that you can look and find um, folks who would really welcome that kind of hospitality if you just start looking. I love that. So your devotion, um, aptly called Loving the Foreigner, is based on Deuteronomy 10. And in that passage of scripture, um, it's where God is speaking to his people before they're going to go into the promised land. Mm -hmm. And what do we learn from that passage about God's character and about his heart towards not just his people, the people of Israel, but towards all people? Yeah. Yeah. It's really striking that you see that phrase, remember the alien. And you see that repeated twice in that whole section where God is instructing and encouraging and reminding his people about what's important. And I feel like the reason he is saying that twice is because it's one of those things that's very easy just to forget and leave behind as they enter into the promised land and they're going to experience the land flowing with milk and honey and experience all kinds of blessings in their lives it is very easy just to kind of take that all in I think he is saying but don't forget where you once were where you were once the foreigner where you were once the alien remember what that was like because it's going to be very easy to forget when you start entering into a context where you're comfortable and and flourishing you know don't forget those who aren't comfortable and flourishing so for me that always kind of stuck out to me in that particular passage that reminder and i think it really is because it's easy for us to forget when we are in our own comfortable contexts and settings but it's easy to forget that there are those who really need that kind of reminder we are people who forget when god knows that and he's like don't don't forget i'm going to read it because yes. it's just so um so just moving, starting in Deuteronomy 10, 17. For the Lord your God is the God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great, mighty, and awe-inspiring God, showing no partiality and taking no bribe. 
He executes justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the resident alien, giving him food and clothing. And so tying back to what you're saying, your family practiced of like in a very practical way, you know, like those American soldiers handed your dad cans of tuna and you can provide a Thanksgiving meal or maybe an everyday meal for mm -hmm. someone who, um, you know, finds themselves in that, in that alien kind of position. I, I yeah. reminds me that God is a God of compassion mm -hmm. and he calls us as his followers to be that yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, I think we can extend the concept of the alien and the foreigner, not just to those who are immigrants or from another country, yeah. but for anyone who is on the margins, mm -hmm. who we can notice and, uh, and who we can extend a hand of hospitality to. And that's a concept that you know, our kids, if you have them, can certainly understand and appreciate or just within our own households or family life. Because there are all these people on the, on the margins all around us. And uh, we just, again, have eyes to look we can find ways to be welcoming. We can find ways to make connections with those who might, for whatever reason, be on the margins of society or the margins of whatever cultural context we're in, school or work or activities or whatever it might be. Um, it's part of what it means to be a Christian is to follow yeah. God's example to reach to those on the margins. Right. So what has that, how else has it looked like in your life, um, how do you think we, as women, as believers, grow in our ability to see other people and to look actively look for those opportunities? Mm. I feel like our general tendency, you know, the birds of a feather flock together. It's mm -hmm. just part of human nature, I yeah. think, to want to be with those who are similar to us. It could be similar in all kinds of ways, right? Mm -hmm. It could be life stage. It could be age it could be values uh, and there's there's a there's a, a good in that too right when we are able to come alongside those who understand each other understand mm -hmm. us and feel support from that so there's a place for that there's a place for gaining strength from christian community and from one another but right. i think that we continually have to remind ourselves of this whole idea of seeking after the the alien in some way, shape, or form. And when I've had opportunities to do that, when I've pushed myself out of my comfort zone to reach wow. across all kinds of different barriers and boundaries, I, I feel like my understanding of who God is expands my understanding of so many aspects of who God is, expands. I feel like I have learned a lot about what it means to be grateful in all things, what it means to be generous, from those who are themselves either homeless or uh, without many resources on their own. I, I have learned so many lessons about uh, how my own comfort level, how, how my own um, how my own bountifulness of life has in some ways prevented me from seeking after God, prevented me from relying on God from those who have very little themselves. And so as we do more of building relationships across different barriers, I think we just grow so much in our understanding of who God is and how big his love is, how big his grace is. Yeah. We have so much to gain from other people. <laughs> it's not just about like what we have to give and like what it looks like to help someone in need, but maybe yeah. that person that we identify as in need or on the margins, we need, I need what that person has to offer of Absolutely. experience of, you know, of, of their story, of their insight. And so I know like this year, as I think about, you know, our theme for this Bible study is women of courage. And mm -hmm. I want to be the kind of woman who's courageous enough to reach out when it feels awkward or feel like, I don't know what I have to give, but to trust that we really are better together. And as much as maybe I think I have my little bit to offer, mm -hmm. um, there are women who have a different story than mine yeah. who have so much to offer me. Yeah, absolutely. I think that if I look at our culture right now, it just seems like there's so much brokenness, there's so much division, there's so much yeah. hostility. And I, I wonder how some of that I think is a reflection of our inability to do this, to do this well or to pursue it well for whatever reason. Maybe it is uncomfortable or yeah. maybe it's easier again to stay with those who are kind of similar to us in the way we think. But then we don't grow, you know, we don't grow relationally, we don't grow in our understanding of other people. 
Uh, we don't grow in our bridge building abilities. And I think that we are, as Christians, are given the responsibility to be reconcilers. I think that reflects the gospel more than anything is when we can show that kind of conciliatory attitude towards other people, especially those who are different from us mm -hmm. in some way. So I think it's hard work. It's not always easy. It can be mm -hmm. awkward. We can make a lot of mistakes along the way. So that's all true. And right. yet at the same time, there's a lot that we can benefit from and we can learn and grow from as a result. As I was thinking about having this conversation today, um, I put on my Be Kind shirt. I think probably for you guys, it's backwards, but it says Be Kind. <laughs> Um, and, you know, based in Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate and going back to that compassion. When I think about like extending ourselves in compassion, of course, I think about the story from the Bible of the Good Samaritan and that really like meeting someone, their time of need at the heart of it was he had compassion. Mm -hmm. And I think about how much I need God's compassion, how broke to, you know, brokenness, like we all have our own brand of brokenness. And like, what would we be like? Like, what's our version of being stranded on the side of the road, like without the grace of God mm -hmm. and to let that, the gravity of that sink in a little bit more than I do in my hustle and bustle of daily life. You know what I mean? Yeah, let yeah. That in and let that be the motivation to be like, how much of God's compassion and kindness have I been given? How can I extend that to someone else? Yeah, and the amazing thing about that story is how many barriers were overcome, right, between mm -hmm. the Samaritan and the man he helped. There were um, ethnic barriers, which were significant. They were um, happening there, certainly. Um, there were all kinds of reasons why he could have walked away, like all the other folks who walked away, all the, all the religious leaders who right. walked away. And so barriers can prevent us from doing the compassionate thing. Sometimes it really takes an act of courage to be able to embrace the compassion and, and do the thing that we know is right, but is so hard. Um, and yet that's what we're called to do. And our source of courage, and this is what I love about Encourage, if you guys didn't know this, the name Encourage um, came because thinking about that when we are in Christ, mm. therefore we have courage. Yeah. And And to think about the fact that, like, I can't muster this up on my own, mm -hmm. but when I remain rooted in the Word, and so I love studying the Word in community, when we're rooted in the Word, that is our source of courage, to, yes. to be close to the Lord and to hear what He has to speak to each one of our hearts. Yeah, and I love what you just said there about rooted in the Word, absolutely, and I have my encouraged Bible too, uh, rooted in the Word, but also studying that alongside other people in community because yeah. I think that is also where our courage comes. Uh, yeah. we, we gain our strength absolutely from directly from the Lord and from the movement of His Holy Spirit. But I think sometimes it's that extra accountability and support that comes when we are engaging in scripture, in community, where we find ourselves galvanized to actually do that really hard thing because we have other people coming alongside who are think, feeling and thinking the same way. Which makes me think, like, what would happen if we left today, you watching, Helen and I left today, and we linked arms with a real-life friend and said, hey, God's been stirring my heart in this way to reach out to this person you see at church or at school drop-off or um, you know in the cubicle across from you and and maybe you feel too scared to do it on your own but with someone side by side we can infuse courage in one another yeah yeah I think that's what it's all about that's what the church is meant to be in our at our best is that community that comes along one uh, alongside one another in pursuit of God's mission in the world. Uh, God wants to use us and that has created us to be his body, his hands, his feet mm -hmm. here in the world. And there's so much need. There's so much to be done. Uh, God can do it on his own, but he chooses to use us and to partner with us to bring his gospel, his good news to the world, to the hurting, to those who are in need. So absolutely, that what you're saying is makes perfect sense to me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm talk um, in your devotion about the reality that in a very real spiritual sense, we are all foreigners. We are all strangers because this world is not our permanent home. Mm -hmm. How does keeping that in mind um, shift your perspective on a daily basis? Mm. I feel like there's so much in our culture that 
is trying to convince us that this is our home, mm -hmm. that this is our world. And it's so easy to just get wrapped up in that. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there's so much, just whether it's subtle pressure or explicit pressure to just settle, settle down and, and, and build your houses here on earth and to build a comfortable life here on earth and we forget that we're not supposed to be citizens of this world we have a a time frame that it maybe is too focused on this life and not remembering that we're not created for this life we are created to be god's instruments of love and peace and mercy in this life but that we're created for something more so i am I feel a sense of blessing, this maybe that comes from being kind of directly more tied to an immigrant lifestyle. My parents were immigrants, and so I know their stories pretty intimately, and that's why I think it helps to continue to tell each other one another's story. Some of us may be more removed from that kind of um, story ourselves, or we not, may not know uh, or know of how our families came to be immigrants themselves. So getting to know other people who have more of that kind of immediate connection with uh, with the immigrant story or delving into your own family history to find out more. Uh, all are ways that we can both appreciate who God has created us to be and the families that we've come from and our heritage and our backgrounds, but also to become more intimately tied with this idea that we are all foreigners here in this country in one way or, or another, certainly spiritually. I love the way you're de you end your devotion. You say, um, as the old hymn goes, this world is not our home. The more readily we can own this truth, the easier it will be to stretch out our hands in love and care for those who need our hospitality. Mm -hmm. So friends, let's be women of courage who are willing to acknowledge this is not our permanent home, but God has a plan and a purpose for us right now today and that starts by being kind extending compassion and showing his love um, to those in need